Hi everybody, I'm Rob Young, the Turbo Goss of the Turbo Goss channel, and welcome to the channel. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is explain some common misconceptions about what a rotal is, and how some words that are commonly used to describe it are not interchangeable. Uh, most people here in the U.S., when they see somebody sitting on a sled, they think it's a luge. Well, if you're French, that's true, because it's a French word for sled. But uh, it's not a rotel, and I'll explain why very shortly. The uh, common words that are thought to be the same thing, and they're not, is sledge, rotel, schlitten, luge, and toboggan. They're not the same thing. Now, sledge is easy. Uh, the Brits tend to call a sled a sledge. Here in the United States, we tend to use that word for uh, a really heavy cargo type sled that is made out of wood and uh, it's used for hauling hay to uh, cattle in the winter using a tractor or what used to be done around here, the horses. And I, I think there are a few of them are still doing that, but it seems to be falling out of use. Uh, the, uh, now, the history of uh, Rodel and Schlitten is a little confusing. And when I was, in 2009, when I was trying to figure out what the heck a Rodel is, and I kept finding all these mysterious words, I didn't really know what they meant and what kind of sled they were talking about. So I had no idea what kind of sled I should be researching and what kind of sled that uh, I really wanted to inquire about. And so digging deeper, I found out that at one time Schlitten and Rodel, they're both German words, were used interchangeably. Uh, there's there came a time when a split was made, and that has a bit of a story with it. Now, we're, uh, you, you got to think back in the 1800s when in San Moritz there was a hotelier. This is a very common story. Uh, wanted to get more money in the winter because he, his clientele visitation was down. I mean, San Moritz is known as a spa type place. His primary clientele were uh, Brits and wealthy Brits, I might add. And so uh, he made a bet with some Brits that he could make it worth their while to come visit in the winter because he thought San Moritz in the winter was a cool place to be. And lo and behold, it turned out to be true. Uh, people took up, it took uh, took him up on it, and next thing you know, uh, yeah, business was booming. All right, so uh, it wasn't always there wasn't all that much entertainment at that time. There wasn't a whole lot to keep people interested, and some of the guys, some of the Brits, they take the blame for it were getting a little bit too bored and they noticed that there were these cargo sleds that were around. These were Schlitten. And uh, the translation for Schlitten is sleigh, which I think is a reasonably good translation, simply because sleigh we think of as something that's rather inflexible. And you put a horse in front of it and it pivots like that in order to get around. It's the... Uh, it's a stiff frame, though, that here is the key to this definition. All right, so these guys decided that, uh, gee, wouldn't it be fun if we just slid around the streets on all these little towns and so forth? And they did, and they started terrorizing the populace because they just started getting a little, well, they got competitive. All right, so what happened was that competition ignited a, you know, a, a, well, it got serious. And it got serious enough to where is it? It was 1883, there it is, was the first organization and the first governing body for competition was developed. And you'll love the name of it. It's It was the Internationale Splittenverband, 
And you know, so that Schlitten was in the name, Schlitten Verbant. Uh, in 1935, the uh, governance moved from German speakers to French speakers. And then under that governance, the name changed, of course, French, International Bobsleigh and Tobogganing Federation. Now, what's the word for, the French word for sled? Luge. Ah, okay. So, in 1957, the International Luge Federation was formed. You know, you see, it stayed Luge ever since it went over to French, right? So, but it, let's not uh, forget, it didn't mean that the, uh, doesn't mean that the Rodel and Schlitten as words went away. It didn't mean that uh, recreation wasn't happening. I mean, when the guys were just racing down the streets just for the heck of it, of its recreation, right? So it was still Rodel and Schlitten. Well, the neat thing about con uh, about uh, competition is that oftentimes it'll bring about innovation. And what happened around about mid 1930s it depends on who you talk to what you read it just so happened that somebody got the brilliant idea to put a wiggle in the schlitten in other words loosen up the frame a bit and when that happened the uh the competition well when that when the wiggle was put in it changed the turning characteristics of the schlitten and at that point, technically speaking, it be, went from being a Schlitten to a Rodel because the difference between a Rodel and a Schlitten is the flexibility of the frame. When that happened, maneuverability picked up. It was absolutely phenomenal. You didn't have to put feet on the, uh, on the snow in order to turn, which with the Schlitten you had to because it was stiff. So if you had, didn't have feet on the snow, your speed picked up tremendously. Not only that, the thing turned on a dime compared to a Schlitten. All right, so at that point, a Schlitten became a Rodel. But meanwhile, in the competition realm, Luge stuck with the program as far as the word to describe the sled that was in use. And it has stuck there to this day. So, we got the Olympic luge, we have the natural luge, so-called. The two are distinctly different disciplines, but the similarity is they're both competition. So the word luge is associated with competition. Rodel and Schlitten are separate from it are more attached to recreation. Get my drift there? So it really isn't wise to refer to a rodel as a luge. That is completely misrepresenting what it really is. If you look at the difference between the sled itself, between a, uh, a rodel and the uh, two competitive disciplines, well, we all know what the Olympic luge looks like. There isn't a whole lot to it. And it's more or less how fast can you get down a... Uh, well, to me, it's just nothing more than going down a gutter. Yeah, I know. It takes a lot of skill, all that stuff. But to me, if you have to time it down to the thousandth of a second, there's. I don't have that much respect for it. But natural luge, that one... You're not going down a trough or a, almost like a tunnel, but it is a trough. Uh, the It's more like a road. There's no bank turn or anything like that with it. You really have to know what you're doing when you go down through that thing. You have to be able to brake. Have you ever seen a, pray tell, have you ever seen an Olympic luge type brake? All right, so a natural luge, you're, you have to brake or it's all over. Uh, you have to turn at a certain place, and you do it with big body movements. They look sort of subtle, but compared to Olympic luge, it's, uh, 
it's a big movement, all right? And they're, they're both on ice. Uh, the, but anyway, that's just personal opinion. The, it, what we're coming down to is that luge is for competition. If you want to talk competition, say luge. That's fine. Long distance sledding, which is by my definition, that's I that was the one that first brought that into being here in the U.S. Snorkeling is long distance sledding. It, 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 in, in a sense, it doesn't really matter what you're sliding on. So, so long as it goes a long distance, it can make the turn. So it just so turns out that the rotor does it best. Now, a Schlitten will do it too, but if you ever watch any of the videos of uh, people in Switzerland, Austria, Germany, heading down a Rotelbahn, which is the pathway that is groomed for that, th for that purpose, You'll notice that the guys on rotals go by the Schlitten like they're tied to a stake. And more common, you'll see uh, moms with a little kid or dads with a little kid on Schlitten. And their feet are out on both sides, usually kind of wide. That's, you can tell what they're on right away when you see that. Cruising down the hill, giving their kid a thrill and getting out, having a good time. But the rotalers just scream by them. Well, all right, so that's, that explains the difference between Schlitten and Luge and Rodel. All right, now the, the last one here is Toboggan. And that one, I don't know how it came to pass exactly that when you see the translation for Rodel, it's Toboggan. And I, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Because here in North America, we know what a Toboggan is. It's that uh, sled put together out of usually maple slats, and it's basically flat, and then it has a turned up end, you know, like as if it's been steamed. Well, that's what it was. It's been steam bent to make a curl to it, and that's the front end of it. And they can be short, they can be long. Well, I have a, have a little bit of a theory on that, because I started looking into that just a little bit, and if I can find it, I'll tell you about it. Oh, there we go. All right, as far as I can tell, the word toboggan probably wasn't even in Europe uh, until after the 1540s. I don't think it existed. Now, somebody, somebody uh, who's far more knowledgeable than I can clarify that, I'd be glad to hear it. But here's what happened. We had the French come in contact with the North... Eastern woodland peoples. If it was during the snow time of the year, you know, we're talking about Canada here, northern northern U.S., up above Maine, and so on. Uh, they would have found that they had this thing that we call a toboggan that was used to pull cargo around and kids, and I'm sure somebody somewhere probably decided, let's slide down a hill with it. I mean, kids are kids. But some adults like to do it too. All right, so we've got this device. The French come over at that time, that uh, 1540s, and they see this thing, and they ask what the heck it is. And the uh, what they were told was tapacan or something like that. It, you know, I don't know what the pronunciation is exactly, but the uh, the Micmac was one of the people that are peoples that are credited with it. But they, they said, "Oh, that's a tabacan." And to the French ear, it sounded like tabagan. Hmm. So that got moved over to. Europe, of course. They, I'm sure they brought back samples of these things. And then, look at that. It's the top of gun. Uh, later, that word gets anglicized, inevitably. And it becomes toboggan. That's the only reason I can think that the word toboggan ever got to Europe early on and became entrenched in the language. I, I don't think it existed in the, in the language in Europe before then. And we all know that it, it came from the northeastern woodland peoples. So how 
it was just suddenly decided that uh, a rotor should be called a toboggan is absolutely beyond me. But that's the translation right now. The uh, let's see if there's anything else on that. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, that's it. So I, I hope I gave you a, a, an idea of why you don't want to go around calling a rotal a luge. Rotal recreation. Luge competition. Simple as that. Easy to remember. I hope that cleared things up a little bit. Well, Thanks for dropping by, and happy rotaling.